So we're going to show uh, how to demo the cable checker. Uh, so you invented this thing. You had a reason for doing it. What, what was your reason? Well, my reason was uh, every time I would go out to a company to do a repair, um, I would always have all of the good cables mm -hmm. would be on the side of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. right? So they're being used on the presses, you know, on the tools. Mm -hmm. uh, in maintenance was where my job was going to come in, right? So I'm either testing a mold or I'm testing a you know hot runner system, mm -hmm. and uh, all of the bad cables were actually inside of the maintenance room or the tool room. Right. So I said there's got to be, you know, a, a better way of testing cables uh, than the way that I had to test it with an ohmmeter. So yeah, that's why I came up with this problem. So let's start with that. So everybody has to check cables. Yes. Right. So everybody's got this pile of suspicious cables. Right. They don't know what's wrong with them. You're looking for a miswired zone, an open heater, an open thermocouple zone. How would you do it the old way? The old way, you know, if, if I had somebody with me, it wouldn't be that bad uh, because I would actually hand someone, you know, mm -hmm. one side of the cable and we can actually, you know, I would have to put this inside of Audible because I can't look at the meter right. and also um, uh, test the cable. So I would listen for the Audible. Yep. All right, then I would hand that to you know whoever is working with me, and I would go to pin number one and listen for the audible. Got pin it. Number 13, because I know the wiring diagram. Yep. And then so on and so forth. Two yep. and 14. Okay. All right. And then, now, uh, all right, and then ground? You can check for the ground if you want to. Yep, you can check for the ground. And on this cable, it looks like there is no ground. So we lost the ground. There you go. Cable. So you got yourself a bad cable. <laughs> All right. All right. Now what I didn't look. What if for, you were doing it yourself though? If I was doing it by myself, then this the way that I would have to do it is I would have to actually take. I would have to make sure that I could see the pin, so I could get my glasses. I would take the connector, make sure that pin number one and pin number one are kind of together. Right. And I would have to actually put it between my legs. If I have a vice, it wouldn't be that bad. Right. Okay. But again, I want to listen for the audible. And then I'm going to go pin number one to pin number one, pin two, and then so on and so forth, all right, until I do all 24 of the pins. Let me ask you a question. Out of yeah. 24 pins, how often are you going to get it all right? Uh, you know, it, it, it depends, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, if, if you know the wiring diagram, it's not that bad. Right. All right. If you don't know the wiring diagram, now you got to go and look for a drawing to see how their cables are wired. Yeah. All right, okay. So right now... I'm looking at pin to pin, right? So I got a contact on each of the pins. But yep. what I didn't look for was a short. Right. So the only way that I could find a short is by actually touching like pin number one and then going to every one of the pins. So you can see how long that's going to take me to be able to test. It's going to take you a while. Before I could even put it. And you may, not, you may not find it. I mean, if you didn't touch that exactly right. Right. You there may, is a possibility you may miss you may, it. You may miss it. Yeah. Right. Right. And then also if it's up on a press or something like that or you have to pull the cables down, uh, there's any possibility of missing something like that. Because you gotta remember you got I think it's like somewhere around five hundred and something contacts that you're gonna be Yeah. Five hundred and seventy six or something yeah. like that. So if you were gonna build you build cables yeah. every day, right? Yeah. So if you're building cables or you're gonna rewire a connector on a uh, cable, yeah. how would you what would you have to do doing it the old way? So the old way, you have to wire up one of the sides, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And then with the ohm meter, again, you're grabbing, uh, I could take this one as an example. Um, I would have to actually have it again inside of a vise. Mm -hmm. I would have to look for that first pin, all right? And right here, you can tell that it's, I'm having a hard time with just holding it in place. Yep. Then I got to touch every one of the wires until, until you I find, find the one that, that is making the contact. So you see that I kind And of then once you it. find it, you would label it. Then you could label it or put a crimp on it and and wire it right away. Wire it right away, yeah. Yeah. So not fun. No, kind of tedious. <laughs> it probably takes about for each cable, I would say if you're really good at making a cable, you could probably do it in about a half hour to 45 minutes. If you're not, it'll probably take you, you know, close to an hour to build a cable. Yeah. Yeah, who's got time for that? And that's if you have all the parts in front of you. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's do the new way. All right. Okay. So we're looking for, you know, everybody get back to open zones, miswired zones, shorts, and then building out cables. Right. If we do it this way, 
what do you do? Okay, so the way that I built this uh, this tester is, uh, you could tell that it has several different connectors on it, right? Okay, so I actually put the wiring diagram on here. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to think about the wiring diagram. Mm -hmm. All right, so on the 24 pin connector, um, we wire it for the customer. One and 13 are the first zone, followed by two and 14. Got it. That's the first connector. This one has two types of connectors. So you have mm -hmm. a 25 pin connector, and the 25 pin connector now is wired A1 and C1. Mm -hmm. And then A2 and C2 for zone two. Got it. Okay, so I don't need to think about that. Yep. It's already done, it's already custom made for the customer. Mm -hmm. All right, so if I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to test the cable. Now here I got a demo cable that's kind of booby trapped, right? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to plug in. My controller in. Yep. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the mold in. All right, I got a rotary switch and on the rotary switch is going to give me each of the zones mm -hmm. followed by each of the pins that are being turned on on the cable so it's point to point contact all right so zone number one is wired correctly zone number two is wired correctly three is wired correctly four i got a miswire okay so immediately i found that miswire right and going back again to the old way yeah to find a miswire you would have Put pin to pin, yep. and it would you wouldn't have had continuity, nope. so you wouldn't have had your beep, right? And you would have said, "Oh, great, something's going on." But you still didn't know where the miswire was. Well, there's a couple things right? that we don't know, right? One of them is we don't have continuity on it, right? Right. So we don't know if it's open or miswired. So it could be that that True. wire fell out completely. Yep. Because we don't have a you know an LED like this that actually tells us that it's been miswired, so we don't know yet what's going on. Right. So we would have to actually. So we're spoiled it. here because we know it's a yes. miswire. Because if it was open, you wouldn't have anything. So doing it the old way, if you, you so now you know you have an open or a miswire. Right. Then what would you do? So if I'm looking for something miswired, and yep. I'm probably not going to do that right away. I'm probably going to open up. This connector, the connector, and make yeah, sure it's connected. If the wire, yeah, if the wire fell out. So, yeah, make sure it's not an open, or that a forklift didn't run it over, or that somebody didn't break the wire on the inside of it. Yeah. So you have a lot of stuff that could have happened. Right. Before you even see something like this. So as simple as this seems, yeah, it's, it immediately solved a lot of questions, yes. answered a lot of questions. Right. Okay, got it. So now what? We got uh, we got a booby trap. Uh, short in here too? We do have a booby trap short. So this is a miswire. We can mm -hmm. tell right away. Let's go ahead. That's an open. So no LED lights up. We're inside of zone number five or zone number four. I'm sorry. All right. And we can tell that there's an open. Yep. So we know right away it's not a miswire. It's an open. There's a miswire. Which again could be a connector on either, yep. either end. Either end. Yep. That is a short. That's usually what is missed. Because most customers or most you know employees are not going to look for a short. They just miss that. They're not going to check one pin and then go through every <laughs> one. Of the yes. So it does get missed. Most people do not this check for shorts. This is the most dangerous, right? This is the most dangerous cable that you can have out inside of manufacturing, and the reason why is this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like it's good because it's only now. So I'm putting you know uh, my test lead inside of pin number five, and guess what? Five is lighting up on the you know on, on my ohm meter. I can hear it. It's audible. All right, but what is of course it, it is. Me, yeah, because it's audible. Yeah. All right, but it's not telling me that it's also making a contact with pin number 26 and 20. If I don't check every pin on that cable, I will not know that it's that it was shorted out. How, how many people do you think actually check for shorts? I, I'll tell in you, cables? I, I've seen I've seen people check cables and it'll be missed every time. Yeah. 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 So right. back to why is it so dangerous? All right. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Yeah. Right? So we have zone number five that has a short, mm -hmm. okay? If the mold, all right, if the mold has um, a heater that is uh, connected to those zones, obviously they are gonna be, mm -hmm. all right? You could blow a fuse, mm -hmm. okay? If on the controller. On, on the controller. Mm -hmm. you, could, you can also blow the heater if it's a cross wire, right? So that means if you have um, a direct short, you can also blow a heater and also blow some of your thermocouples because if they're grounded thermocouples, there's a possibility of doing damage to those thermocouples also. Right. The other thing is, 
that if it is two separate, if you have a hot and a return here, a hot and a return, every time zone number five turns on, you might be turning on, you know, zone number uh, three or zone number uh, eight. Right. So every time it turns on zone number five, zone number eight might be going. So you, you, you lose time. control. Yeah, you will lose control. You're gonna lose control. You're gonna damage thermocouples. Yeah. Potentially damage your heater. Yes. And not to forget that you actually have a short. Yes. Yes. And if you didn't find that short, you got a set of cables that are out there yeah. that are potentially dangerous. Absolutely. So if, if you found a cable that had a short in it, what would you do? If I find a cable that has a short in it, what I will actually do is that I, if the connectors look good, mm -hmm. I will go ahead and I will cut off the connectors mm -hmm. and I will take that cable and I will actually throw it away. Um, I have had customers that have said, no, the cable's probably good. Mm -hmm. The problem is probably right at the beginning of the cable. Uh, I have told customers that, okay, this is what I'm going to do. If I see that the cable is good, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to make you a new cable for free. Yeah. Okay? So what I'll do is that I'll actually split the cable for the customer yep. and I'll open it up. And when I open it up, you'll see that there will be shorts or melted wires in several sections yeah. of the wire. Yep. And they, cable. Yeah, and they'd fight that forever. Yes. You yeah. gotta show it. Yep. All right, so what else? So we've got um, miswires, opens, shorts, and then we also have the ability to probe, right? Yes. With the test lead. So right. why did you put the test lead on here? All right, so there's a couple of reasons why I put the test lead. One of them is so that I could check around. All right. So like the cable we just had yep. is... So if, uh, I, yep. so if I want to check for ground, I can go ahead and I can do that. And you can see that the ground turns on. Yep. All right. But then also, if I am building a set of cables from scratch, right? So right. my company makes cables. We don't buy cables. Right. All right. What we can do is that we can actually wire up the controller end of the cable. Yep. If it's a thermal couple, you got to make sure that all the white wires, all the positives are in the right place and all the negatives are in the right place. If it's a heater, it doesn't matter. Put the wires anywhere you want. Right. All right. Same thing with the thermal couple. Put the wires anywhere you want. Yep. Just make sure that the positives are where the positives belong and the negatives are where the negatives uh, belong. Yep. All right. And now I don't even have to think about it. Okay. With the probe, immediately I know that that's going to be C7. I go ahead and I put my pen inside of C7. Whereas before, we were searching. We had to go to every, yes. every one. Yes. So if it took you 30 minutes, let's say, to fa and, uh, that'd be fast, yep. right, to build a cable. How long would it take you with this? Oh, I don't know. We could probably, I mean, you can see how fast I'm going through it. I don't know. Uh, probably if you have this end already wired up, you're probably talking about maybe 15, 20 minutes. So you cut your time in half. Yeah, Easily cut it in half. half. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yep. What else can you do with the, with the lead, right? So if you have a, a pin that's pushed back. Yeah, so that's a good question. So if I do have a, pu a pin that is pushed back, the, uh, the test lead is actually made small enough uh, to be able to fit inside of these, uh, these little cavities. All right, so I can actually push back. So before I even test this cable, if it's, uh, if it's a cable where it has crimp pins, mm -hmm. I will go ahead and do this. Just make sure they're Just all sure pressed they're in. All, yep, if I see that there's one that is not uh, that's not making a, a contact or slipping back, you're going to see it's going to look like this. It's going to go all the way down. Okay. All right. So I know that there's not a pin inside of there, but that's what it's going to look like. Yeah. It's going to drop back. back. So what would you do? You'd have to take the uh, connector apart. You have to take the connector apart. And press apart. that yep. you back can also, in. Yeah. You go to the back of it. You can push the pin in, see if it does insert. Mm -hmm. If it does not, then I'll probably have to replace that insert. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay.